Um, <clears throat> I'm going to save the meal plan to discuss the meal plan. Karen can't get on until 7 o'clock, 7 p.m. So um, I know she's going to have a bunch of questions, so I'm going to save the meal plan to the very end. And um, do some screen share on talking about practices, previous um, videos that are on our YouTube channel. I'm going to talk about power sports season, upcoming events that are coming up, and then we'll finish with the meal plan at the end because um, I want to discuss that. What my plan is to do with the meal plan before I actually load it into the app. It's going to be a little different for each person um, based on what the <clears throat> goal is that we're going to do with it. Thank you. So, um, okay, so I want to review this. Um, and uh, go over this. So Todd said, good job to everyone who competed in the USA track and field regional meets and championship this year. Many medals won, lots of solid competition was faced and many lessons learned. Um, so the way that we felt as coaches after the season, the outdoor season ended was we felt really good on the decisions and the strategies that we did and the decision not to go to the national um, outdoor meet this year it just been too much just so many moving parts and new dynamics and all that. We're really glad that we were able to get in um, a couple regional meets um, because next year going into the indoor season, it happens so fast. That's why we got to like <clears throat> practice next week. You know, be going over how we've got to get back to fundamentals. It's pretty much you'll have October, November, December, about four months of indoor practice and then boom, it's already time for um, indoor. <clears throat> the indoor season starts February 11. <clears throat> so it comes really fast. And then the Midwest championships, indoor masters championships is March 21st to the 24th. So this shit comes really quick. Um, the regional is March 2nd. So it'll be like back to back. They're both once in Indianapolis March 2nd, and then the Nationals are March 21st to the 24th in Chicago, Illinois. So close by, fun places to be, that's for sure. But it's all in March. Uh, so everything will be leading up to that. So now we're moving on, um, moving on to the prep of USA Track and Field Masters Indoor. Um, so mid to late January through mid-April, even though the schedule that we have it doesn't have anything going past March 21st uh, for Midwest championships. It might be on the West Coast, but as of right now, that's all That's all they, they have posted. We have several athletes on the team who, with consistent training, right mindset, attitude, emotional control, have a real shot at winning the national championship in an event or multi-events. Um, so that's a big focus that he wants um, everyone's frame of mind to get to, um, to get into winning national championships. And so always striving for something bigger and bigger and bigger. <clears throat> so that's the mentality that you've got to get to, that you have to grow to. We don't expect you to have that mentality right away, um, but you just have to keep evolving. Um, and the more you win, the more you want to win. National champions um, uh, are the high level of winning. World record obviously is the very highest, but national champions is still a huge level. It can actually get you a lot of great things. Um, Brittany ended up getting <clears throat> free Invisalign when she got her national championship um, just because one of her girlfriends um, told a dentist and the dentist said, oh, well, I'll give her free Invisalign to say that I have a national USA track and field master's winner. Um, and she got all her teeth done. So it's like $11,000. So there's a lot of opportunity for all of you and um, in winning. Uh, so you don't want to downplay winning whatsoever. I don't know why my screen won't show me my Zoom. I'm trying to also see my Zoom. So this is so fucking weird. What's going on here? Okay. So anyway, um, <clears throat> so there's a lot of great opportunities, and um, your attitude, which I've already went over a lot of stuff. Um, is everything. It matters. Um, taking it serious matters. Taking yourself serious matters. 
um, winning matters a lot. Um, the reason that winning matters a lot is it prolongs life. It, sh it shows health. It um, inspires. It makes people feel they can do stuff that they didn't believe that they could do. So winning is a really big deal. And to downplay winning is to your detriment. You don't want to do that. Um, I keep hitting stuff that I shouldn't be hitting. Oh, my God. I'm going to get back over here to this. Um, make sure that you can still see my practice thing, even though I exited out of that. Give me a confirmation you can still see it. <clears throat> can somebody tell me they can still see the actual practice on my screen or not? I can, Melinda. Yeah, we can see it. Okay, thank you. Um, all right. So indoor prep training and conditioning is crucial because it's the foundation to be in shape for both indoor and outdoor season for 2024. So now that we got a lot of the nerves out of the way, you guys know what it's like, you felt what it's like on the smaller regional levels. Um, some of you watched the actual national meet um, where we saw Tyree Kill, NFL player, come in and just smoke his 60-meter uh, a lot of those nerves should be out of the way. A lot of those um, <clears throat> unknowns should be out of the way so you can actually focus more on yourself as a master's athlete, on um, your goals, on um, uh, achieving and striving for bigger and bigger things. And um, again, like I said in a meeting last year about being part of the promo team with AMP Up and what we're trying to do, how we're trying to grow AMP Up. Um, Todd's going to be, we're going to be doing a meeting about all the developments that we've been doing behind the scenes with AMP Up, with our website, with all the different um, updates and upgrades we had to do to the site to get ready for growth, get ready to um, put in a referral rep commission structure that when people use your code, it'll automatically start shooting out payments to you for your cut of the commission. So we're so excited about automating all that kind of stuff. And then he's going to be talking about the growth of the company, where we're headed, um, what your position is um, with it, um, what we're doing with the pro teams and that kind of thing. So got a lot of exciting things he's going to be talking about sometime in November. Um, so next bullet here, indoor training conditioning phase lasts about 10 weeks, October to early December. December and January we will be devoted to technique detail training and maintaining your conditioning levels. So... The reason that we like the, the powerlifting is at the end of the year now. You've already got to make weight for powerlifting. And power sports just impacts track so much and vice versa. But powerlifting really impacts track in a great way. So now that it's October, we have to go full swing on powerlifting training. This time, I want your experience to be different. You need to think about it from a different place. Since it's not your first season anymore. You need to come from a more mature more responsible attitude as an athlete. Um, I see some of you actually, you're kind of clicking over. I'm going to tell you what the click over looks like in the, my eyes as a coach. You know how much prehab you need to do. You're aware how much you need to roll, how much you need to, how many Epsom bath soaks you have to do, how much foam rolling, how much massage or cupping you need to do. You're going out of your way to make sure all of your muscles are nice and loose. You get to your practices early to loosen up and stretch out and roll. You're putting your goals up on your mirror. You're just being really mature about it you know, in an awesome way. Um, and you're just taking your um, all of the conditioning serious. So body fat and weight loss... I don't take those, I mean, you're a master's athlete, so for some people, keeping the weight down is easy. For some people, it's not. Some people, you're on a journey still, just dropping, 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 and you're just dropping weight until you get to your goal, so that's awesome, too. Um, some people who are really stressed out gain weight from extreme stress, and you're just having to take that back off, but that's just life. Um, so not really talking about that. Learning how to... Um, Give yourself the proper nutrition for your practices and for the actual events. Um, all that is just all signs of 
you've taken it serious. You're taking the whole process really serious. And to be a pro athlete, that's how you need to be. You actually have to be serious. Watching film of other competitors is part of being serious about being a pro athlete. A pro athlete is someone who gets paid. So that's why we are tying the money into the athletics. So the more you guys win and the, with our marketing that we do, promoting your wins, that starts to turn into cash for you. And the second you make $1, you're a pro athlete. So we mean it. We said we have two pro teams, we mean it. And the third one will be our pro fit model team. So it will be professional fitness models getting paid. So we're putting all of that together to execute. Um, this is year one for us for Inc. 500. So we're going for our next Inc. 500. Uh, so this will be year one. We've got three years. So at the end of your third year, you have to make over one point two or two point one million dollars by year three, and however fast you grow from year one to year two to year three is where you rank in the Inc. 500 or 5,000. Obviously, I have no stomach for the 5,000. I have to be in the centerfold. I actually like to be in the top 25. But uh, so this is our first year that we are beginning our Inc. 500 run for AMP up. Um, <clears throat> Okay, I just uh, had um, our uh, video guy. I'm, I'm going to move over to YouTube. Just confirm that you can actually see when I just scroll through the video. Can you see where I moved over to YouTube? Can you see that I'm scrolling through videos? I hate this computer. No where? wonder why you gave it back to me. It fucking sucks. Yeah, no wonder. It fucking sucks. I literally tried to make it work for a whole month, and then I was like, horrible. this is a glorified <laughs> off-brand iPad. It's awful. It's awful. Anyway, um, can somebody give me an answer? Where are we? Why can't we see us on the screen? Where I know. Go? I don't know why. We can, yeah, we can see can your see screen. You. Okay. We have no clue. Oh, yeah. Now we went, Now we can just see you guys. <laughs> oh, God. So now, now we're back on the screen. And normally, it makes us small. I don't know what the fuck it's doing. Normally, it makes us small, and it shows the screen within the screen. So. This was my business Christmas present two years ago. <laughs> That's awful. And my uh, my um Apple laptop for, uh, died, so I had to go back to this shitty computer she doesn't like, yeah. which I don't like it either. <laughs> anyway, I, I have to go back page. off of here and go blind again on the Zoom screen to show you where I was. All right, I'm going over here to YouTube. Can you see the channel content for YouTube? I'm back over there now. The answer was yes. Yes. Please. Yes. Yeah, now we can. Yeah. Don't we type in the chat. the chat. We can't see the chat. Yell at us, please. Yeah, yeah. I can't see the chat. Okay. So what we want you to focus on now, um, we uh, just finished season. So we're done with season one. of. Um, so we had a preseason, and there's videos that say preseason on them. Um, and then we went into season one, and you'll see all these practices here. Several practices for season one, and I think it went up to 19 practices. Yep. So that was the end of the season. By practice number 19 was the end of the season. Um, so these are either live practices or videos that we shoot. And then our meetings are on here. They also were part of season one. Now, every meeting starting today goes on to season two. And then all the practices that I loaded into the app that are the October practices, though they are the first practices of season two. So now we are in second season, um, indoor training um, for USA Track and Field. Um, and we've got those three videos. Anyway, there's a bunch of previous season ones that, that loaded late, but anyway, they're on there. And there's several meetings. So uh, he wants you to go back through the practices and just view them, just go through them, um, looking for some of the fundamentals that you might have forgot or whatever. So you're just kind of watching film. Make sure you look through the videos. Um, because he wants a uh, extreme focus on fundamentals now, um, meaning he really wants to see that you um, have watched through the fundamentals visually. You're practicing the fundamentals on your own visually um, and and physically, whether you have an implement in your hand or not. You're just doing it over and over, over and over. If you're just sitting down in a chair, watching TV, watching a movie, um, whatever, um, in your kitchen, waiting for something in the microwave. Just do reps and reps and reps of just turns or throws or just a hand position of something. So he wants those type of details um, on your fundamentals. So go through all of season one, preview the stuff really quick. 
um, and just say, okay, I did a refresher. I watched that film. I got that stuff in those quick, those quick lessons and that kind of stuff. So it all has been updated. Now it's very easy to see. And it's just literally loaded in there by the season and just by the practice number all in order. So wanted you to see that. The, uh, can you see my screen now that I went over to, I'm on. Yep. Bunch okay. of track pictures. Yeah. Okay, good. This is what the track looks like for the nationals in 2024. Midwest Masters Nationals that would be in Chicago, Illinois. Dr. Conrad Oral Track and Field Center at Gately Park. So pretty sweet indoor track here. So that looks pretty sweet. Um, so that's where the um, nationals will be held for the Masters in Chicago. So you kind of get an idea of that for USA Track and Field. Um, it's pretty big and looks pretty awesome in there. Okay, so there's that. Uh, then um, when it comes to shot put, people doing the shot put, um, Todd said that the there's a soft indoor shot. So um, if you already haven't researched that, um, all of you that are doing the shot, you wanna make sure that you uh, research the indoor shot puts. They are, I think it says, um, just a super soft indoor shot put. I did look over on eBay and there is some used ones there too. Um, so there's some of those over there. You just make sure you match your weights up exact on those. So there's some better deals. <clears throat> if you feel like buying them over or look for them over on YouTube, um, you can find the rubber indoor ones. Make sure it says indoor, soft shell. It will say that over and over, indoor, indoor, indoor. And just make sure you get your weight matching you. Okay, so did you guys all see my eBay? Yes or no? Yeah. Ebay's yes. Okay, thank, you. thank you. Okay, I told you about that. Um, so uh, Todd told the story about Aaron Rodgers today. Is this my no? This is just even show you your previous thing, your previous note. You're so stupid. I know it's horrible. Horrible. I know. I don't I don't know who made this dysfunctional? Just horrible. Asus is an asses, an asshole. Asus the asshole. Asus is a shitty computer. That was after it took three months to set up two times. I know. Awful. Um, <clears throat> okay. Okay, practice app. Um, do the practice workout video. We tape and add to the chat. Already did that. Live official team practice next Sunday on October 8th. Still going to be at Worthing Way Middle School. Um so we'll stay outside as long as we can before we have to go indoors. We've already researched a place that we're gonna, that we're gonna um, most likely do indoors. Um, pretty cool. So we'll announce that um, once we finish negotiating with them uh, for indoor uh, practice. Each night, stretch, massage, rotate, prehab moves, ankles, feet, toes, calves, quads. Do not take that lightly at all. Um, just make it a habit. It's literally a true habit every single day, whether it's your morning, your night, where, at your desk, wherever you do it. Also, make sure before each practice, do the five big stretches. All those are happening no matter what for your full body to get warmed up. Um, the thing about injury is once you get injured once and it feels like shit, um, especially your Achilles or your calf. Like I said to Rhonda yesterday, anytime I hear somebody say, yeah, I've got tight calves, I'm like, oh, fuck, this is a really bad injury getting ready to happen. There is no such thing that I have ever seen someone tell me that they've got a tight calf and I don't see a horrible leg injury happen. You cannot walk around with tight calves ever. It's just it's like, no. It's like you can't do cocaine and you can't walk around with tight calves. Okay. They are, they need to be side by side in your mind. No to cocaine and no to tight calves ever. You cannot have tight calves. You go do whatever the fuck you need to do. You cannot walk around tight calves. Your calves must be loose as hell. You have to keep them loose at all times. They always have to be flexible. You always need to be stretching them out. You cannot fuck around with a tight calf. That calf yanks on the hamstring and the Achilles. He just, when he's tight, he's fucking with too many parts of your lower, of your leg. So it's a off limits. No way can you put up with a tight calf. So if you are one of those people, you better go out of your way to get that fucking tight calf gone. Get it gone. Get it gone. 
So fix a tight calf issue above all things. Make sure your Achilles are always loose, your calves are loose, your hips and your groin. That's another one. Second place is your groin. Don't fuck around with a tight groin either. Massaging, good hamstring flexibility, good back and hamstring flexibility, um, all that matters. So the cobbler stretch is big. You can't bounce. You can't smack on stuff like that. You just have to hold. Flexibility happens over time by holding a position for a long period of time. So that's how, that's just the best way to get flexible. But you can loosen everything up with rolling, the ball, the foam roller, bands, everything. Um, since we're not teenagers where you can have the arrogant attitude about stretching and flexibility, you can't have that attitude. You cannot do that as a master's athlete. Nothing will get you out of any form of competing faster than one of those areas, like the groin or the cab being tight, nothing. Um, so don't take that. Don't wait until you actually get hurt and you're like gone and out. So Aaron Rodgers, those of you who don't know him, he's an NFL football player. Anyway, he um, moved on to the a New York football team. And he was supposed to be this great hope. And he was in fabulous shape. It's probably the best shape I've ever seen Aaron Rodgers in. And first game, I think, I think it was the first game, tears his Achilles tendon. So all this money, all this hype, all this hope that he's going to help the New York Jets win the Super Bowl, and he literally tears his Achilles tendon. He's just now 40. So even though he's in great shape, he was ignoring that area, which ruins everything on some level. Anyway, the cool thing about what he said was he said, I'm going to rehab five hours a day his tore Achilles tendon. I'm coming back this season. So it would be amazing if he can actually make that happen with a tore Achilles tendon. That is a horrible, horrible, awful injury to have. So I'm, I'm being really strict here when I'm telling you about that stuff. Um, all right. So obviously conditioning workouts in there, he's keeping it very basic and easy. All the throwers, conditioning, support exercises, spinners and jumpers and the race walkers. All that goes together with the support exercises. Um, so it's very cut and dry. One of each of those a week. And then you got your practice. I loaded the three practices. So they just need to be um, three weeks that are just not this Sunday. Um, so you've got that going on. I do, um, do want to say how great of a job all of you have been doing. Just managing, um, figuring out how to just fit this in. I had to figure that out too. I thought, oh God, this is going to be so much work. How am I going to fit it all in? And I literally was like, wow, when you just make these little routines daily. Um, I got to see if I have to go anywhere else. I don't think I do. No. When you make little routines daily, um, that's the best way to work in a track and field lifestyle. Um, just little things, never big stuff. Doesn't have to be a bunch of big shit that you have to do in a day. Just work on little things and that um, keeps the stress level down. And um, it, the little stuff every single day helps you not lose the blood flow in the shoulder for throwing or in your back or whatever. So it doesn't need to be like, Oh God, I got to change my shoes. I got to go outside. I got to spend two hours. No way. You don't have to do that. You never have to do that with track. It's a little stuff over time. Um, powerlifting. Um, obviously you guys all know this by now. It's like you work out two or three times a week with us um, or on your own and you're ready for a show in 12 weeks. This time around, just want you to be more mature about it. So definitely more mature, more um, uh, really paying attention to your lifts, watching film on other competitors, watch the lift, watch little things that you see them do. Watch what you see um, other USA powerlifting. It's got to be that organization since that's what we're competing in right now. But watch what they do. Um, get, you know, um, more competitive. Look at the numbers. Look at your own numbers. Also compare yourself from like three years back. You want to go, okay, where was I three years ago? Where am I today? Where was I a year ago? Where am I at today? Uh, where was I when I never did a long jump? Oh, my God, I long, I long jump now. Uh, where was I when I couldn't feel how to even get my steps down? Um, or like Brittany, couldn't even feel pulling herself up in the air. Now she can pull herself up every single time she does a long jump. Yeah, it so, looked like I was doing a tuck jump into a big pit, like a gymnastics little kid. Like just tuck jump into the um, foam pit. That's what it looked like before. Now I look like I'm actually kind of doing a long jump. Yeah, exactly. 
it looks like a, a real long jump. Yeah. So next is like the arm circle thing. Yeah. So go from the past, compare yourself to there. Like, wow, look how many steps I've already come. And you'll see like, you just get so much better, so much better, so much better, so much better. The more you watch film on yourself and then watch film on others and compare yourself from the past to now and how you're just climbing um, and just keep getting better and better. Um, keep that in your mind like that. Keep that focus like that when you are imagining yourself as you're getting better and better. And I always say it's like, well, no matter what, this year I'm going to be better than last year. There's no way. There's no way you're going to get worse. It's like you keep doing new techniques, you're going to get better and better. And then you'll start to get to the point where it becomes more and more fun to coach you because, and it was, by the second meet, it was so much more fun because as a coach, we want to work like the NFL. When you watch an NFL game, you're watching those all the coaches. They, they have the professional athletes out there, and now the coaches have all of their strategies on their papers, and they're just thinking about all the strategies they're going to do, and then they're looking at what the other team's doing, and they're getting all these calls in their headset. Well, that's what we're going to do. Our biggest gift that we have is our gift for strategy, how to get you guys to win so quickly, how to get your form so good so quickly. We watch so many details. Um, that's why a lot of these other coaches and just other People on other teams are like, wow, your team is so professional. Your team is so good. I can't believe this is your first year competing. Wow, I've been doing this for 33 years, and you guys just look so good. Your team is so nice. They cheer for other people that aren't even on your team. Whoa, that'd be so awesome to be on your team. I wish I lived in Ohio. We just heard so many good, so much good feedback. Um, and that, we want you to kind of in, engage with all that. Um, while, you know, our biggest picture for all of us is we want to do anti-aging. We want to slow the aging process. We don't want any soreness in the body unless it's muscle soreness because we're working hard on some event that we're doing. Not soreness from fucking stupid food or from being lazy and some stupid arthritis and bullshit that happens just from um, underuse of the body. Soreness from being working hard, that's, that, that's a fun soreness. At least, you know, I will work hard for that. Um Okay, so I told you about that. told you about the upcoming things when we'll have our meeting in November sometime. Uh, we have some upcoming events that are coming up in October. If you guys want to, I've, I've been posting some of it in the app. Um, one of them is next Saturday, next Sunday. It's uh, later in the day. So we have practice earlier. The Haunted Zoo, Mary is a, um, a scare actor there right now. So we're just kind of going, um, a bunch of people are going to actually go through the haunted zoo, which I've never done it before. Um, so we'll meet there around 7 45, 8 PM. And I guess there's three different venues there. And, um, so she's one of the zombies that's there. So anyway, if you want to go and actually uh, be a part of that, you can go do that. And then monster bash is Saturday, October 28th. Clearly I'm not a runner. I absolutely despise running. So I'll be power walking with some other people, but if you feel like running or power walking it, it is 8 AM. Um, in Dublin. Um, so Monster Bash, 8 a.m. Saturday, October 28th. Um, Rhonda or Meg or whoever found some witch outfits. So mini skirts with witch hats. And they're going to make a shirt that says Amp Up Bitches. And they're going to cross out the B and put a W there. <laughs> so Mike, if you want to wear that shirt with us, you're, <laughs> we'll, we'll be totally happy <laughs> with that. <laughs> you want to do it with us? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure they don't have a three XL. That's my excuse for not <laughs> two two. <laughs> three XL with a witch. I can only imagine the skirt over top of your leggings. <laughs> oh, anyway, so those are the two events that are going on. So, so I hear some people are seeing my post. Some people are not in the app, but so I'm letting you know both of those. So those are just the October things happening. Um, okay, so understanding he wants fundamental real good close focus on fundamentals footwork handwork hand position all just a little nitty-gritty go back to the nitty-gritty on the footwork on that kind of stuff um because it's going to impact everything that you're doing um and again more professional on your body conditioning feeling tightness nowhere especially number one not in your cab number two not in your groin um, and if you say, I've done blah, 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 and I still can't get it to go away, you ask one of us and we'll tell you exactly what to do. I will say, all right, here's another protocol to try. So you will keep doing it until it's done. 
I had to consult um, for one of my, um, for the Fitness America, ESPN Fitness America pageant. I was like, man, I got to get in this toe touch and I got to get in the splits. And I have, I, I'm not able, I can't get in the splits. And I tried all kinds of shit. And then um, one of my clients was a um, police dog trainer. He's a jujitsu master. And he said, I can get you in the splits in three weeks. I was like, what? I've been trying to get in the splits for years. He's like, three weeks. And then I was like, okay, we got to put some money on the line. He goes, okay, I get my training for free. If I get you in the splits in three weeks, I get three months training. I'm like, oh, hell yeah. If I get in the splits in three months, you definitely get three months training. So I go there. He trained the, the uh, police dogs at OSU. Go there. He goes, all right. He said, I got my class going on in there. He said, you're going to get ready for your stretches. I said, okay. And he took a, a life cycle bike and he took the seat and raised it up to the very top. So he pulled the seat out and plugged it into the very last hole that was really high. And he said, what magazine do you like? I said, uh, people, us magazine. He said, okay. And he went and got a couple of those magazines, put them on the floor. He said, okay, give me this right leg. Takes my right leg, puts it up on the seat. <laughs> that high? Because I'm so fucking short. So it puts my foot up. So my foot had to be facing this way. Puts my foot up on the seat. And then I had to be standing on the ground. And that foot was up on the seat. He threw the magazines on the floor. Took my back, bent it over. He said, read those magazines till I come back. I was like, okay. So I had to sit there. And then he came back about 45 minutes later. And then he goes, okay. And then he said, stand up. And I stood up. And he took my foot from here. And he goes, okay. Put my foot like that. Bent me back over. He said, get back over, read the magazines from the back page to the front page. And he said, until I come back, I was like, okay. And then he came back about 45 minutes later and I got out of that. And then he goes, turn around. And he said, he had two more magazines. So I turned around, put the other foot up, 45 minutes, 45 minutes, no movement. Just looking at the magazine, stay in that position. I was in the splits in like 13 days. That fucker, he got three months free training. He said three weeks he'd have me in the splits. I was in full-fledged splits in like 13 days. That's how good he was. He was so great. He could do Chinese splits. He could do everything. So he knew. So if there's something you don't know how to do, there's somebody that does know how to do it. So he got me in those splits. I've been trying it on my own. I watched all kinds of YouTube videos. I was fucking watching everything. All kinds of books, all kinds of Google searches, nothing. A jujitsu master got me into the splits 13 days. And he, he promised me three weeks. He said, oh, three weeks, that's plenty of time. 13 days, did it, got got my show. Could do the splits, perfect. Toe touch turned out great, everything turned out great. So there is a way for you to have no pain, everything be super flexible. You feel totally confident. You don't wanna have that worry in the back of your head. I don't like worry in my head. So if anything starts to like creep up and I start to get worried about something, it means I'm not doing enough work to make sure that shit doesn't happen. So same thing with you. So make sure that you've done everything you need to do to avoid that. Then if you've done everything you need to do and some little shit happens, uh, it's not going to be as bad. It's going to heal faster. Um, it won't stay sore as long. So there is going to be some little shit that happens just because we're just always exerting ourselves. But if you do all this extra shit, it's like the same thing that we do with competition. When you over prepare, all of a sudden, nobody shows up in your weight class. Nobody shows up in your age class. You get to win. It, it's not that no one showed up. It was all your over preparation because you under prepare. They're going to humiliate the shit out of you. And everyone's going to be in your weight class or your age class. So the universe is amazing on being over prepared. So you want to be over prepared for stuff. So everything works in your favor. Um, all right. Now that it's after seven o'clock, I want to go over the meal plan what my plan is that I want to do before I load it um, is uh, I've done so many different meal plans with you guys. Got body fat down. We got weight down, all that. Um, I want to do, I've done this before, so I know it works great, is um, bodybuilders do it all the time. And so you take a bag or you take your cooler or whatever you want to take. You put all your food, every single thing that you're going to eat for the day in that bag or in that cooler. That's what's going into that. That bag has to be prepped ahead of time and it goes into your cooler or your bag for the entire day. You don't eat anything that's not inside of that bag. So I will base it based on how much weight you are to lose to get ready for like your weigh in for um, the powerlifting meet. And then we'll figure out those calories. So if I say, uh, and then the only macro I care about is your protein macros, especially for power lifters. So protein macros will have to be counted. So let's just, I'm just gonna pretend, let's say that I give you 1500 calories to do for a day. 
1500 calories for a day. And let's say that you need to have a hundred um, macros of protein. So you have 400 calories. Is that right? Is it four, four grams yeah. of protein? 400 calories of your 1500 have to be protein calories. So the first thing that you're going to put in that bag is 400 calories worth of protein. Then I don't care about your other calories. You eat, you put whatever other things that you like to eat in there to get it to 1500. So what this is going to do is it's going to tell me we're going to do it for 14 days. We're going to do it for two weeks. Everybody's going to do it for two weeks. I'll give you what your macros need to be, your personal macros um, and your calories, unless you're on some other special diet with Todd. You don't have to do this if you're doing Todd's diet, but if you're not, um, um, we're going to try this and see after two weeks, like you start to figure out, wow, this was too little. That wasn't enough calories. This made me want to binge. This was just right. Uh, this was too much. I couldn't lose any weight on it. I felt bloated or whatever. Um, so we're going to kind of do that. We're going to do a test of your calories. You must put all that shit in the bag for the day. And so you'll kind of compete against yourself. When you look at those calories for the day, everything you're going to eat or drink or whatever is in that bag. Even your, even your one scoop of protein or whatever, you put everything in there. So, you know, okay, I grab this out and make this or whatever. There's no extra little calories coming from anywhere. And we're going to do that and be able to say, okay, I know exactly how many calories, how fast I can drop, um, how quick I can get to an actual competition weight. Um, if it, uh, if I say, okay, well, we did a great job of that. That's awesome. I got to gain some muscle with you now. Um, and you're eating too low of calories. We got to go up to like 200 or 300. I've done 300 with Mike, 300 macros of protein um, in order to actually put more muscle on. I'll be able to do that as well. So some of you are going to be very high macros on your protein, um, taking up a lot of your calories, whatever those calories are that I give you. So that's kind of what the idea is that I want to do. I've done, I've done carnivore with you. We've done detoxes. We've done all kinds of uh, versions of eating, which as a lifestyle, obviously all of us eat the same. I think they said that the thing is, is every human on the planet eats about the same hundred foods. We all, and, and I would never think that I have a hundred food palette, a hundred food items, but every human eats about the same hundred foods, their, their hundred foods. Um, on a regular basis. So all of us end up finding, you know, oh, I like this protein or I only like this one fish or I hate fish and, or I only like white meat chicken, that kind of stuff. So what we're trying to do here is what's the amount of calories to get your body fat more competitive? And that's how I want you to think about it. So I want to get your body fat more competitive. I also don't want a feeling of if you feel bloated and it makes you feel like you have, you're more lethargic. So we're trying to reduce body fat. Um, we're trying to reduce any kind of lethargy, uh, reduce any kind of bloat, bloated feeling, which is typically on the abs. Um, so, and some of you still trying to get, we got to drop more than 25 pounds, 25 pounds plus that needs to be lost still. So thinking of your goals, why that body fat needs to be less, literally, especially for track um, or to make weight. That's why on that. Um, okay, so pack a bag each day, count the macros of your protein only. The rest is just calories. And then we're going to find your exact sweet spot for you. So you know, wow, I know the exact number of calories. I put it all in a bag, take my bag for the day, whether I'm working or I'm just going around doing errands. I just have all my stuff packed. And if you go, wow, I just ate a couple things earlier. I got all these calories for later in the day. That's what you have for the whole day. So it doesn't matter when you eat them or how you um, cook them or whatever, you just make sure this is all my calories for the day. That also includes butter, oil, every little thing. So if there's supposed to be oil and vinegar on your salad, or whatever, that shit's got to be in the bag. So it does work great. Um, I did it multiple times for different shows that I've done. So I know it works. So um, just want to experience it with you guys and get feedback from you. So 14 days is what we're going to test it. I see how your body reacts to it. All right. I went over every, everything that I need to talk about. What about you? You got anything? Um, so I'm glad you went over everything about the, everything you need to do to get your body, um, in a healthy state and keep it in a healthy state. The thing I'm going to be discovering and going through like a discovery process next with Todd is getting more into researching, like the exercise physiology of strength conditioning and even more about prehab and even more about strengthening connective tissue, mm. because I'm at the point where 
now that I'm, of course, I'm coming in with the base level of strength from being a power lifter for all these years and I have a certain amount of strength. Now what we're discovering is now that like my, he's taught me all these things on technique and it's improved to a certain point. The more that he's teaching me how to generate power, the more I'm generating power and the more it's causing my body to hurt in weird ways. Mm. And it is not the same issues I was having with my hip and instability and pains before. So everything that I've self-taught and self-discovered on all the mobility strength training I've done over the past year, year and a half, that's all working. But now we actually have to consult with some track conditioning specialists oh, and some exercise physiology specialists Good. because the more he's teaching me, the more it's hurting mm -hmm. um, to the point where I'm like, okay, you're, you, I'm getting better. Like you're, you're teaching me how to be better, uh -huh. but it's not enjoyable. So that's mm -hmm. where I'm at. And that's what we're going to be like researching and discovering and doing zoom calls with specialists next. Love it. Um, and that's kind of like the personal journey that I'm going through that we're then going to be teaching you. Um, do other do areas that weren't hurting before or hurting now? Is it new hurt? Yeah. Yeah, and it's things where I'm like, I don't know how to fix this. Like, okay. I literally, I don't know how to fix it. Like, okay. mobility and, like, from working with Chuck, he was able to kind of point me in the right direction by saying, like, your um, your gluteus medius is inferior. Like, look at your external rotation. Like, you don't have any strength when you move your leg in that range of motion. So that's how I even was pointed in the right direction to know, oh, mobility training. Like, Mobility training is actually strength through a full range of motion. So then everything I've researched and done over the past year and a half, like it's self-taught. So nobody told me every day when you go to the gym, start out with like two mobility flow circuits, even on arm day. So every time when I go to the gym, like four or five times a week, I do probably like 20 to 30 minutes of mobility stuff, but right. it's like the two or three different mobility circuits. Again, even if it's arm day, I'm doing hip mobility because yeah. hips low back posture, it's all connected as I've learned, mm. but nobody taught me that. So yeah. this is all like self-taught a lot yeah. of trial and error mm -hmm. and it's taken a year and a half to learn this yeah. where now it's like the amount of conditioning. So the next thing I have to work on with Todd is okay. He's like, now we have to get you in really great conditioning. Well, that's a lot more volume. And so that's where my body's like, mm, fuck you. So that's where it's like, okay, I might be able to do this for one day, but then I hurt for five days afterwards, oh. or I can do it for one day. And then when I told him, I was like, I was literally at the track crying because I was like, I will run like a mile or two miles for time. And then I was like, every time that I do it after that, a couple of days later, I'm literally getting worse at it. Like I'm getting worse at it. So the purpose of conditioning is to increase your speed, increase your feelings of strength, have less pain afterwards, have better endurance. And I was like, that's the part where I'm not naturally an endurance person. Like I don't naturally have this training. I never went towards these sports. Like I don't naturally have these muscle fibers. Mm -hmm. I don't naturally have this, con this muscle conditioning or mm -hmm. connective tissue conditioning, whatever it is. Yeah, whatever. So it is. from everything that I've researched and everything that I know here to now, it seems to be like more about the connective tissue. And it seems to be that when certain things are tightening up, it's actually making things like my glutes not operate at their full capacity. So my hip flexors will get so tight that I literally don't even have the range of motion to use my glutes anymore. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's where I'm at with the understanding of it. So more to come on that, but that's kind of what I'm going to be going through and what I'm going to be teaching you guys. Um, but as far as all the mobility training that I do and I have done, it's why I'm not limping around every day. That's so great. that is what I have learned. And that's now what that's my great. Thursday class is about. Yeah. So that's going to be something that because we film it, I want to be able to offer that to all of our athletes. Um, oh, yes. Yeah, so talk about like that. supplemental training. Yes. Yeah, so okay. About that. So my Thursday group. So I've had like that was probably like the fifth week that I was using them all as my guinea pigs. Okay. So my Thursday group has changed over the past couple of years. And we always kind of change what we're working on. And so now, because there's so many of our athletes that are my clients um, and just regular people that aren't even our track athletes, a lot of people have hip issues. So a lot of people either from sitting um, or just the fact that we're not 
active all the time. Uh -huh. Like, and then the cold weather months. Uh -huh. um, so a lot of people have hip issues. And when I'm watching people, because I've been so trained because of myself, I'm watching muscular imbalances. So whether it's one of my clients that can't get down in a squat all the way, or knees are hurting, or I just see that the weight is too far forward, all of that has to be fixed with mobility training so you can keep your weight in the right place so you can get down low enough in a squat so you are activating the right muscles um so it's completely changed the way i look at all form as a trainer mm -hmm. and i'm constantly watching where is your weight when you're doing a squat because we put weight on it and if you're leaning too far forward then either you're going to fall forward the weight's going to go into your knees too much you're going to have too much rock your back's going to roll forward so I'm watching where your weight goes and what muscles are actually flexing. Mm. And that's kind of the diagnostics where it's like, okay, here, we're going to do this mobility training. You need to strengthen this, this, and this. Um, and it ends up making you better as an athlete and better in performance. But it also stops pain because you're actually balancing out, kind of like balancing out your tires on your car. Mm -hmm. Your muscles have to operate the same way. So we've always taught this as trainers where it's like you have to have the right ratio of quad strength to hamstring mm -hmm, strength. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, 70% your, your hamstring has to be 70% as strong as your quad. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're on the road to pulling a hammy. Mm -hmm. So that's just the science of if these things aren't aligned, you're most likely going to have a hamstring injury. Mm -hmm. So with mobility training, you're looking at and I'm looking at, okay, we're looking at range of motion, but then we're also looking at do you have the ability, pretend like I'm seated in like a herky pose, um, you need to be able to actually lift up your leg when it's on the ground, fully up and hold it, mm. and then put it back down. Mm. So things like that where it's it's your, it's your <coughs> adductor, it's your hip flexor, it's your gluteus medius, it's your actual glute. And then it's the flexibility to get in that position. It's literally all of those things, which is why it's taken me a year and a half to learn about this because it's not just one variable. So every time that I've learned something, I would go to the gym, do one thing. I'm like, oh, great. That works. That's the magic answer. That's the key to success. Like, great. We'll just do this every time. And then I get to the gym and I'm like, fuck, that didn't work this week on week two. Now what do we have to learn to get this to loosen up and to get this to activate and to get this pain to stop? So Basically, what my Thursdays turned into is the different exercises that I superset at the gym. Um, and I do this with my powerlifting. So I'm doing this with my athletes in here, too, whether they know they're doing it or not, where it might be a traditional, you know, moving just up and down or just forward and backwards range of motion exercise. But then we're going to superset it with something twisting, because like I was telling everybody at some point the week I learned it, that is what releases collagen in the tissue and in the muscles. Mm. Um, so you need collagen to be released for repair, uh, but you also need it just so you can have good flexibility and range of motion. <laughs> so we'll do one more strength-based exercise, and then we superset it with more of a range of motion exercise, sometimes with light weight, sometimes just body weight. Um, there's a lot of balancing components because that is going to engage all parts of the glutes and your inner thigh and your abs. And then the second part of the Thursday workout is what I call a mobility flow. So if you know like what a yoga flow is where you go from this move to this move to that move to that move and all of them go together so you can flow and feel great afterwards and be flexible. Well, we do a mobility flow where it is eight, a series of eight mobility exercises that are back to back to back designed to get the entire body from head to toe mobile and feeling good and get the spine moving. And we do each of those eight exercises for 30 seconds. And then we loop back and do the whole mobility flow again. Um, so that's something that I do, A, because it saves time, but B, because so many of these things that I've been studying, they're just working one little muscle or okay. they're just working one little range of motion where, especially as an athlete where you're performing, like that might be great if you are an older person and you fell down the stairs and you have to go to a physical therapist and you need something rehabbed. That's not who we are. That's not what, what, you're, what we are here to do. Exactly. So we have to actually get our bodies ready for high impact and um, intensive output and range of motion and falling and all of these different things that we're experiencing, especially in track and field. You have to have a very agile cat-like body. And so that is your spine and your hips, basically. 
And then any kind of knee pain, ankle pain, foot pain, all of that comes down line from your hips. And so all of those things flow together. So the reason this has been both so frustrating for me is because it's not just one thing. It's not, this is the answer. We found the answer. This is the problem. This is the solution. It's literally everything. So like Melinda was saying, it's getting your massage. It's foam rolling. It's an Epsom salt bath. It's the right supplement. It's enough protein. It's getting enough sleep. Like the answer to perform on this level, it's literally everything. Yeah. So yeah. these mobility things, it's not like, okay, rehab, like something's injured. You do it for eight weeks. You're done. You never have to do it again. Like this is something that I literally do every other day. Mm -hmm. um, and then I go home and I lay on what I call the psoas impaler to get my psoas to loosen up. <laughs> and then I have a monthly schedule with Chuck and I have to get on Michelle's calendar. Uh -huh, yeah. And I was getting so frustrated because I was like, why is my body so high maintenance? Like it shouldn't be this way. Like, Oh my why God, do are you crazy? And then I was like, I don't have any more time in the day to do more things and self-care. Like, how many more fucking bubble baths can I take? No way. How much you use your body? Are you crazy? You don't even do 20% of all that self-care to match how much work you put on your body. Exactly. Exactly. So, exactly. so now it would be nice level. if I could see 50-50. There is no way you're 50-50. So now no we're way. at the level you put of talking so much to energy a into professional your body. about more right. and getting more insight into what I have to do because I'm like, I, it, it's beyond just taking up some salt bath every night. Oh my God, way beyond that. Yeah, yeah way beyond that. So, and a lot of what she was saying is um, uh, the mentality thinks that when you're hurt, you put a Band-Aid on it, it scabs up, it goes away, you ignore it, you forget about it. Well, this is not that. Uh, your workouts, your stretching, your massage, your cryo visits, that all goes together. Not there to is, fix it. They're not, we're not doing things to fix problems. You are, this is, LeBron has a cryo machine in his house. He has a um, infrared sauna in sauna, his house. Yeah. He has the hyperbaric chamber in his house. So these people, um, Dara Torres is the only one that made me jealous. She spends 150000 a year on massage, on five massage therapists. She gets massage five days a week. Um, foot, she, she has three people that use their bare feet to massage her lower body. Um, when she's on the floor and then the other people are like upper body and their hands or whatever. Anyway, that's an athlete. That's a lifestyle of an athlete. So, so it's kind yeah, of like we're not saying treat, things yeah, so that I are temporary. To, yeah. So I had to shift it and look at everything I do. Like I do skincare. Yeah. So it's like, You're okay, all in I now. go and get, I don't go and I don't get a facial from Celeste to fix something. She's, yeah. she fixes things, Yeah. but I schedule every single month. Yeah. I go get a facial. Yeah. I get dermaplaning done. Yeah. She looks at things. She tweaks what my protocol is. Yep. And I go in every single month That's your because life I'm like, now. I need you to look at my face every single month. Yes. I need you to tell me if I need a different product, uh -huh. if we need to change up one of the acids that you have me on, uh -huh. like whatever needs to be fixed. Just yeah. look at me once a month, dermaplane, yeah. whatever PL. She always asks me, so what do you want to do today? And every single time I look at her and I'm like, whatever you say I need, <laughs> I'm not here to tell you what I need. You're here to do whatever problem you see. Yeah. I put shit on my face every day. That's my job. You're here to tell me what else I can do to improve it. That more. is exactly. So a when I analogy. started to think about my body and yeah. my self care like that, mm -hmm. yep. then it kind of became exciting again and yeah. kind of reengaged to me. And okay, totally. Well, I've done all of this to activate my glutes so far mm -hmm. and keep my quads loose. What I'm doing is helping to a certain extent, but for me to perform on the next level, I need to learn more. Yeah. So absolutely. I need to learn new ways to work out. I need to learn new exercises. Mm -hmm. I need to try out new machines. Yep. There's so much more that I have to learn. Yep. So when I started to look at that way, outside of the season, outside of get successfully through the next meet, get through the next practice, yeah. make the pain, pain go away, yeah. show up and don't let Todd down. Yeah. When I took it outside of just that. Definitely take it outside of that. Yeah, but I had uh, this whole conversation with Todd where I was like, um, let's discuss this long term because yeah. now that we're outside of just like gut, like get through it mentality, mm -hmm. which I live in a lot of the time and we've lived in 
our whole lives. Um, <laughs> now that I'm outside of that, I was like, I actually want to enjoy this. Yeah. And I was like, I have to find yeah. a way to enjoy this. Yeah. Otherwise, I don't want to do it. Exactly. I, was like, I don't want to do things that I don't enjoy. Anymore. Exactly. So if I'm not feeling good as a result of this, yeah. I why am I doing it? Right. So I, because to me, that's what being physical is. Yeah. Like there's such a physical high out of everything that I do. Yeah. And it's such a serotonin booster. Yeah. And we're losing sunlight yeah. by the hour out here. Yeah. Um, coming into dark, no vitamin D season. Exactly. So it's like all of these things that we do, it's such a serotonin boost. It and is. there's nothing worse than your body hurting. You feel worse after a workout. You feel like you're underperforming. You feel like you're not fulfilling your potential. And you just feel like shit about the whole thing. So that is kind of the next level of things I have to explore and I have to learn. And I have to learn for myself. And I'm going to be teaching everybody. Okay. But um, I have to pick a date. So I think that we're going to do one more Thursday where I do it as like a tester on this group. And then I think that next week on Thursday, that might be like my official start date for okay. this 12 week series. Okay. I film it. You can do whatever you want. You can come, you can do it on zoom. You can do it after the fact when I put the video out the next day. Um, so I'm going to be getting all the information together on that because I actually have like the flow of that workout down. <coughs> I have enough feedback from people. At first I was worried because it's not like, as much of a hard weight training workout that That's they were going to be today. like, well, but I had to get feedback from them. Like okay. I know what it is, but yeah. I had to make sure they see value in yeah. it. So I had to get feedback from my people and make sure that it's what they want. In addition to everything else They're they do with me. All oh, them I flooding. know. And then Katie Comfort's like dripping bullets. Dripping. And I was like, oh, okay, this is a success. I'm exactly. glad. And they feel great from it. Exactly. So they really do like it. And I can tell like they're, everyone is getting like a safety feeling. Yeah. Like, when you take care of your body, there's a safetyness that comes yeah. over you um, that just goes, okay, good job, good yeah. job. We're safe, we're safe. We're and safe. they're all seeing, like, a lot of you know Katie Kemper. Katie Kemper, like, light bulbs were going off because everything that she was doing, she was like, why can't I get my leg in that position? And I was like, that is why we're doing this. Mm -hmm. Like, we will be repeating these moves, and you will see improvement being able to get that leg up higher. Mm -hmm. And the light bulb just went off on her head, like, oh, my God, like, this is something I need to improve mm -hmm. so I don't end up as, you know, an arthritic old lady that can't enjoy gardening and taking her dogs out. There you go. Um, and there then I see go. Carol, who's been my client for like 20 years at this point, and she's had knee problems for mm -hmm. years. And the light bulb was going off like, oh, my God, this is making my knee feel better. There like, you go. She's been a lifetime exerciser. She's mm -hmm. been with me for 20 years. She's mm -hmm. always doing the next thing. Yeah. So it's really cool to see this problem I'm having and the struggle that I'm having as a USA track and field athlete. Mm -hmm getting ready for the next, you know, season of nationals. Mm -hmm. Like that's what I'm getting ready for. Mm -hmm. But it's super cool to see that all of my other clients that aren't necessarily involved in that are like, oh, wow, this is going to help alleviate my pain mm -hmm. and just make me live a better lifestyle, Absolutely. doing things that I want to do and help improve their knees over time. So it's not just, you know, somebody's getting older and they're like, my knees hurt worse every year. They're like, and oh, they wow, like it. my knees can feel better yeah, doing this kind of hurt. stuff. Yeah, exactly. So that is the next thing I'm okay. learning about. So will you post that on uh, either in the app or over on social media when you're ready? Yeah. And you're going to actually start Yeah, and like that. the people that have asked me about mobility mm -hmm. training, like Rachel's asked me, like, what do you do? I need mm -hmm. this kind of stuff. So you'll I'll message them and make sure they get all of the... Okay information okay yeah because right. that's something that after you have it recorded i make a playlist you get the playlist like you can do this every other day like i do mm -hmm. like you can do this as much as you want and you have it forever that's good so that's okay. what i'm doing next okay all right is that is that everything yeah that you want to go over yeah. okay anybody have any questions over that meal plan the upcoming events i went over power sports season um Watching the previous videos that are on YouTube for USA Track and Field, getting back to your fundamentals, just just watching them so they go in your brain before you go to sleep at night. Those are the best times. Um, any questions on any of that? Please ask. I, this is Karen. Can you hear hey, me? Karen. Okay. Yeah. Hi, Karen. Hey. Hi. Just um, I so appreciate all your information, and I know you guys know I feel that way. Um, and it helps tremendously hearing it over and um, the way and the detail that you have. I think the struggle, and I know this is very common, but I'll just throw it out there. The struggle is like with all of the massage and the mobility and the Epsom salts and all those kinds of things are absolutely wonderful. But fitting, <laughs> since we're not 
I feel like we're athletes, but not professional, meaning that's our full time job. That's where it's that balance is so hard to do that when you're working full time, then you're working out. And I think that's, that's just the struggle of it all. Like, how do you do the 30? All right, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. That's what Um, I mean. First of all, a pro athlete, um, let's say, like I was saying, I don't know if you were on the call when I said about Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers was rehabbing five hours a day because he's a pro athlete. Do you want to rehab five hours a day? <laughs> then after you rehab five hours a day, do you want to get hit in the chest and it feels like a Volkswagen ran into your chest like 20 to 30 to 50 times in a two and a half hour period? Would you like to do that, Karen? I got you. I see what you're saying. Yeah. And that's it. Cause we're preventing. Yeah. Um, so so we're, how not do you... be, we're not trying to be that kind yeah. of an athlete. So right. as masters athletes, like uh, the girl that does our hair, she told me when we sent the invites out to try out for the track team, I sent it out for her husband, Gary. And she said he was so envious and he was jealous. And he said, I did track the whole time in my youth. Now I can't even walk. And then he said, they can come out now in their thirties, forties and fifties and sixties. And everybody's all in good shape. Nobody's hurting. Nobody's walking and holding their knees when they walk up the stairs or down the stairs. <laughs> That's what he said about us. And he, she said he was actually envious of the whole team. I was like, that's pretty funny. And he's like, I can't even do the shit that they're asking to do. Because he did it all the way up until his 30s. He was in the pros, all that, just all that damage that they had. And we just have so much more technology now, obviously. But at the same time, we also have did not have all that impact on our body. So we didn't get damaged in a bad way. But what you're saying... Well, the reason I'm saying let's compare to them. Let's compare to a pro athlete. Do you actually want to get damaged and fuck with on that big level? Or even if you're working, we ha- we're we running the company. So we constantly have to find how are we going to fit this in on top I of- answer emails back in the bathtub. Of course. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> so what I was saying earlier was you got to like a typical job. They structure your time for you. And they take over your, your your life. So if they're taking over your life for three twelves or nine to five, Monday through Friday, they take over your life and make you just work for them during that period of time. When you are able to control your schedule, you have to say, um, and I was saying this early on in the actual meeting, you don't want to hoard up a bunch of work and then try to get it all done. It's much lovelier of an experience to put a little bit into each one of your days or uh, around your routines. So my routine is I spend a minimum of three hours before I go to sleep at night. I do my humor. I love to laugh before I go to bed. So I watch funny videos. I have to get some organizing shit in because I'm obsessed with organizing. Then I watch all my um, track videos. So I watch my track videos. Well, while the track videos are on, I do all my foot exercises. I do all these little things while I'm laying there. I'm visualizing, I'm thinking about that stuff, and I do foot things, I do shoulder stuff. I do those little things all throughout the day, and it makes it more fun because it's not a bunch. It doesn't take up a bunch of my time. I don't have to stop something else that I'm doing. I incorporate it. Um, So Todd will be out there with a client, and I'll just be like, okay, I got to do 20 minutes of stretching and put a um, work on the, um, you know, high knee uh, snap down on your um, midfoot put a bar behind my back and I'll just do that for 10 minutes, walk back and forth in the studio, waiting on some, some uh, water to boil in the microwave. So what you want to do to make it more fun and not think it has to be a chore. It has to be a full-time job. Incorporate the little things. Look at, you know, your paper, you write the paper out. You're like, okay, well, I got to work on more stuff for speed walking for you as an example. Okay. I'm going to work on just that part of my thumb and how good and how fast I can get my shoulder to move me faster because my speed, legs follow arms and arms, the faster, the stronger I make my shoulder, the more I swing my shoulder, the faster my legs will move for race walking. Same thing's true for a sprinter. So if you just go, I'm just gonna work on this. I'm just gonna work on that for 10 minutes or for five minutes or for 25 reps. You incorporate stuff each day and then it's not a chore, it's not a job, it's not boring. Um, And it's just fun because every day is something different and you can use your imagination like, okay, well, I'm going to do that three times this week or whatever. And well, oh, yeah. So what I'm saying is incorporate 
the little things that have to happen every single day, seven days a week, then start to go, okay, well, this is what a pro athlete like me does. Like me. Don't say pro athletes outside of yourself. You're the pro athlete. You're the pro power lifter and the pro um, USA track and field competitor. Well, can I add to that? Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. So yes, but then adding to that for me, there are certain things that I have to treat, like I was saying about Celeste and facials and skincare, where it's just part of a routine. Like yeah. I go and I get my nails done every three weeks. Yep. That is the agenda. Yep. I get a facial every month. Celeste dermaplanes it, shaves everything down, mm -hmm. fuzz free. It's good. Um, so like when I went into Chuck uh, a month ago, two months ago, whatever. I think it was a month ago. Okay. Well, um, it was not on a Celeste facial mm -hmm. nail agenda. Mm -hmm. I don't think I had been to him all of 2023. Oh. So I am such a routinized person. Mm -hmm. There are certain things that I have to put on a routine. No matter what. Otherwise, the tyranny of the now mm -hmm. and all the other shit of the day and all of the other responsibilities. And then also just like I should be doing, you know, this work or open my computer or do this to help somebody else. That something that's not about me and my prehab and my body. All of that will take over and I'll just fill up my time with that. Mm. So if you think about, you know, the time in your day and your month as like a cop, you have to plan out. And that's why I have a visual calendar and I have to say, okay, every three weeks, this block, I'm getting my nails done. Mm. No client so-and-so, you can't have that time. Mm. That's my nail appointment. Pick a different day. Mm -hmm. um, so I have to treat certain things like that where it's like every time when I'm with Chuck because he's horrible at texting back, I schedule my appointment with him for the next 100%. one. So we're all on the same page. 100%. I had to learn that about Chuck mm -hmm. because I couldn't track him down no. for months on end. Exactly. So mm -hmm. I had to figure that out. Yeah. So when you go see Chuck, schedule your appointment one month later. <laughs> and that's about the schedule. I mean, if I had a trillion dollars, I would have, I would see him twice a week. But I'm not a professional athlete. I'm not making so you don't need twenty million right dollars a year. Yeah, so I don't, don't need, need that. It that much. So once a month, that works just like yeah. Celeste facials. I'm not getting a facial twice a week like Kim Kardashian. Yeah. That's not the business I'm in. Right. So it's those things where you're like, okay, it works for me to do once a month with Chuck. Try that schedule out. That works for me. Mm -hmm. Next, I'm gonna do you know the two week in the middle of that Chuck period. I'm gonna be like, okay, Michelle cupping on my low back mm -hmm. that worked really well mm -hmm. that kept everything really really loose for about two weeks mm -hmm. in a way that nothing else had helped and, and a looseness that nothing else had ever created before Good. so i want to incorporate that on a monthly basis because everything stayed really really loose for like two weeks and yeah. i started to feel to started to feel it tighten up again just because of all the power lifting and sprinting mm -hmm. and all the things that are using those muscles yeah so I had to stop looking at the muscle tightness like it's a bad thing. Yeah. It's a consequence of all of the impact I'm doing. 100%. And I was like, Chuck, why is this left hip so tight? And he's like, that's the impact because that's your plant foot. Yeah. And then I just had to accept, oh, I'm not trying to stop it from happening. There it's not you an go. injury. Like God. I tore something. Major revelation for you. To, I have to stop it from ever hurting ever exactly. again. Exactly. It's going to hurt. Yes. But I also have to get my hair colored. And get it cut and get my face shaved once Consequences. a month. Hair grows, yeah. nails grow. Yeah. It's on a schedule. Yeah. So I had to start treating my physical prehab like that yeah. instead of being in this mindset as an athlete where it's like, fix the problem, solve the injury. Right. And even Todd was like, why are you injured so much? Why is this just such a big deal? Why is your body so high maintenance? And I had to get him to understand the whole thing. I'm like, I'm not injured. Prehab is not rehab. There's a difference. Mm -hmm. So this has been a whole learning curve for but all of yeah, us. Yeah, but because the way she vocalizes it so much, him and I have the same things that will happen to us. We just, I just go take care of it. And I know it's a consequence. I just go, well, this is a consequence of this. Like even when I hurt my Achilles, I had the wrong type of spike for my foot and my stance and my weight and my everything. I can't wear those small tight ones. I needed a deeper one that my foot fit in. That's why I hurt my Achilles. It was a consequence. My Achilles got hurt as a consequence of those spikes. They were the wrong ones for me to run in. So I had to go do cryo and everything else in order to fix them. So that's something where it's yeah. like an injury and then you have to fix it. Yeah. What I'm trying to get into now is the flow of actual true prehab. Right. Where it's like, okay, once a month I have, yeah. I have a chuck massage. Yeah. Once a month in the interim, yeah. I have Michelle cupping on my low back. I don't need cupping on anything else, yeah. just my low back. Yeah. Um. 
you know, I do my massage gun before bed, probably 50% of the nights of the week, because I figured out that if I do that before bed, the way it relaxes the oh, muscle yeah. and the fashion, the nervous so system, good. So good. you know, if I just do it for like 10 or 20 minutes and just hit everything, I wake up feeling better. Yeah. So there are certain things like that where it's like after you figure out what the routine is with yeah. it, then you're like, okay, this is my routine. Yeah. It's like getting facials. Um, little stretching. things, I little do like things. one full body, like 30 minute gymnastic stretch after a workout. Um, once a week, I have to do like that kind of long, hardcore stretching mm -hmm. yeah. to get everything feeling good. Doesn't yeah. need to be every single day. Yeah. The mobility work I do that probably ends up being about 20 to 30 minutes, like four or five times a week. Yeah. And that's just every time I go in the gym yeah. now that it's getting into not great weather season soon, unfortunately. I'm going to make sure that I go to the gym and even if it's just like 30 minutes walking on the treadmill, I just keep my hips moving. Yeah. So I can't go, you know, a day, two days, three days where I, you know, get busy and meetings come up and I overschedule clients. And then all of a sudden three days, I haven't done shit. And then everything hurts. Everything hurts. So I had to start saying See, like, that okay, little stuff. 30 talking minutes about that little stuff. walking on a treadmill is valuable because I know what it's doing as far as hip mobility mm -hmm. and lubrication. Yeah. And I know that that is essential. And I have to schedule time for myself mm -hmm. to go walk on a treadmill for 30 mm -hmm. minutes. And, you know, if he needs a meeting, I have to say, no, I have or to go call. walk on a treadmill. It's not my something more on. important came up. Mm -hmm. It's no, I'm going to do this. Mm -hmm. And no, now he's at the point where he's like, I have to show you things. I'm like, okay, whatever. Yeah. So, but you know, there are these things where it's like, no, this is a non-negotiable. Like it may seem like a small thing that I don't get my 30 minute Nothing walk in, is small to me. but it's not a small thing. No. The dominoes that unleash yeah. is not fun for anybody involved. Yeah. Does that make sense, uh, Karen? So we don't want you to have to go all or nothing. We want you to incorporate little stuff every day. Yes, and it does. And I guess I do that. I think it is. It's always overwhelming. And I know this is a lot of people think. You're an overachiever. You're an overachiever. And I think in your overachieving mentality, you think you should always be doing more than you're doing. Yes or no? Well, that's probably true. Because you. Well, and I think. Can I say something too? Can I say something too? They're. they're Karen is the, it, it's, she is the most um, organized, uh, multitasking, I can do everything, and she does it so well. It, it, it's like me that I do it like half that well, and I still beat myself up because I can only do it half that well. And, and I try to multitask myself, and I know she's beating herself up because of that and how I feel. <laughs> I totally agree with her that she's like, I don't know, like I'm retired now and I'm busier now than I ever was before when I was working full time and doing my own stuff. And it is hard to do that. And I, from you and both you and Brittany, but Melinda, you specifically, when I've had talks with you, it's just like, I, I can't, I can't beat myself up anymore if I miss a day or whatever. It's no. not because I always felt before I was comparing myself, like you said, get the, get your ego out of it. And yep. I'm, I'm not, I'm not saying that I'm, you know, perfect or whatever. I, I just, it's, I can't feel that way anymore because I was, I was beat myself up so much. I was getting depressed. Like, oh my gosh, look at this person on the team doing this. Look at this person. And some people are like, I, I practice every day. I'm like, oh my God, I, I, it's just like, I can't even do this. You know, and it's just, that's what I've struggled with. Like Karen has struggled with the, t the time and things. Plus financially, some things like the, it, but it, it'll, I, I don't know. I, I just, it, it's work in progress for me. So I, I'm glad I'm not right. she's the only one who feels that way. Yeah. You said it right. You, you, you came, you said it right. It's like the ego doesn't need to be involved. Perfection doesn't need to be involved. Doing it perfect doesn't need to be involved. You have to go, what works in my lifestyle that makes me enjoy it? And don't pick on the self. That's first. We're not doing these sports and doing anti-aging to pick on the self. We are not doing this. We're doing this for self-love. We're doing this to prove it actually is more fun to live a uh, athletic, um, happy, um, supportive, um, anti-aging way of life that where you really take care of yourself. You don't wait for something to break down. Yeah. It feels so much better to live on this side of um, instead of being reactive mm -hmm. or being proactive. So yeah. it's almost like we're the proactive group. We're trying and to do feels, all the anti-aging on body We're care. trying to do it on all levels. No, but no, 
it goes everywhere. I like that word because it's like people know what anti-aging means for your face. It yeah. means you're putting all this shit on your face yeah. pro uh, proactively, proactively to reverse what's naturally happening with environmental entropy, factors and time yeah. and what's naturally happening to it. Yeah. So it's like we are that's what we're teaching, but we're about being as anti-aging and proactive with all of this body and muscle care and exercise physiology and prehab so that you can continue to be an athlete and your body feels great and you're going against the impact and the muscle tightness and the decrease in collagen and stress and sitting. Like you're going against all those environmental factors, much like the face. Yeah. So, yeah. And what I would say, Karen, um, I'm talking to you mainly, uh, a little bit Rhonda too. Um, being an overachiever is beautiful. Uh, it, it wins, it wins, it wins. Okay. So I am not cutting on overachievement. The only part that I'm uh, mentioning here, um, don't cut on the self for being an overachiever, number one. Actually say, I like that about myself. That's a trait I'm really happy that I have. Um, number two, <clears throat> in your overachievement, you have to still ask yourself, do I like the life I'm making? Do, do I like my life? Do, am I happy with how I feel each day? Does, does the end of today, so as of Tuesday, <clears throat> October 3rd, when today ends, am I happy with what I did today? Does it feel good? Should I get up and do some calf raises to feel better? But don't pick on the self. <clears throat> I don't pick on myself. I, I got picked on the whole time growing up. I, I have no tolerance for bullying. Um, so don't pick on the self. It doesn't make you smarter. Doesn't make you better. Doesn't make you more disciplined. It's actually being a bully. So don't bully the self um, with um, ambition. Ambition is a wonderful blessing to have. Um, overachievement is a wonderful blessing to have. But so is being laid back when you need to be. Being um, feeling really good about yourself compared to five years ago, yourself compared to three years ago. I'm not telling you get into contentment. I'm not a big believer in contentment. That's that's a that's a medium tone scale. I like I like competitive tones, which are very high emotional tone scales. But when you get a nice routine together and you're like, man, I got all my little everything working real nice here. Nothing's stressing me out. Nothing's taxing me. Nothing's draining me. That's where you want to be. You want to get to a place where you're like, man, I've incorporated two pro sports that I do. Um, as I'm aging, I'm winning. I'm getting first place in things. I got a whole wall for all my trophies and all this good shit. We're adding in fun events to do on the side. So there's also fun stuff. Um, but don't bully the self. Don't pick on the self. Don't let the ego, whether it's victimness <clears throat> or contrast and comparison, you're comparing against someone and you don't even know anything about them. You don't know that this person, you have no clue. First of all, you have no clue. Remember, I told some of you that one girl that won my high jump, she was in the, um, well, she just won overall women nationals high jump and the javelin. And she scratched after her second javelin. And I said, why'd you scratch? We have six throws. And she goes, I'm not going to get better than that. And I said, I looked at her number. I was like, wow, that's so far. I said, do you practice all the time? She goes, no. I haven't practiced javelin since college. I was like, and you're 57? Oh, my God. And she said, yep, I don't need to. So I got all the muscle memory. I just do the about six meets a year. Every, every other month I'm at a meet. I was like, wow. So if you if I compared against her, if you guys compared against her, like, God, she's so great. She must practice all the time. Motherfucker hasn't practiced in 32 years. She didn't practice since college. So, and like I said about that girl that Brittany always competes against Grace, I'm like, Grace is at probably one meet a month. She's at 12 meets a year, maybe. That's how Grace gets her, her USA track and field in. She just goes to the meet and does it. So don't judge. Don't compare where it makes you less. When I said the thing about Aaron Rodgers, he's very competitive. He's like, I, I want to play. I don't want to not play this year. So he's like, I'm going to do five hours a day to try to rehab my torn Achilles tendon. We'll see if it works for him. It'll be amazing if he does. It'll be so inspirational. But don't pick on the self. Don't compare the self to a story that you're making up about somebody else you don't fucking know shit about. Or you don't know anything about them. So it's so much more fun just to fit in little things. And just like she said, I have, I have fun putting my mani-pedi, my facial, my lip filler. I, I have fun putting appointments with Michelle and Chuck and on my schedule. I That's fun to me. I like to schedule those things. I look at it as I really enjoy it. I like my fucking life. I'm making my life the way I want it to be. So 
don't look at it like it's torturous or that you're not going to be able to get your ambition. Karen, you win so many things and you are an overachiever and it's a great trait to have. And you just have to say, well, let me do some meditation and meditate before I go to sleep for three minutes for four minutes. It doesn't have to be a long time. And just ask for God, universe, give me more happiness and more fun feelings about my overachieving feelings. So I can actually have more gratitude and feel better at the end of every day. I really like how today played out. It played out just like I wanted. I did everything I wanted to do. It's just that that's enough. I got seven days this week. I got 30 days this month. I'll fit all this shit in little by little. All this shit will get fit in. And all my fun I, stuff will fit in too. I guess I feel that way. I think what it is, is, um, and I appreciate all this more than I can tell you. And then, and I don't want it to be a personal thing about this, but I, 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 think, what it, I think what it is, is I it's just trying to figure out, um, like you said, working it into your own schedule. But the l simple example was um, becoming more flexible, um, mobility, mm -hmm. that type of thing. Well, mm -hmm. if I'm going to work out that day and I'm going to do the mobility in that type, like 30 minutes before and then 30 minutes after and then the workouts an hour, that's what I mean. It's that type of thing. So if, if fitting, that, fitting that in within your everyday and I try to do that. I think I do that. And I, I'm very happy at the end of the day. Never had any, you know, I don't have any problems. I don't feel like I'm sore, tender, that kind of thing. But I, but my, I guess my big thing in bringing this up was just to sort of, okay, we've got the three workouts um, and <laughs> watch all the videos and then, you know, doing the mobility. I'm more of a, <laughs> just, well, I want to make sure that we're, I'm doing all of the things to okay. make sure that you become at the best that you can be. That's where I'm at with it. Okay. So I would say that you are, um, let's say, okay. Let's say you got three workouts, you got practice, you got all that. And let's just say you're like, and you've got some mobility and stuff. You go, well, I could do my, mo my mobility things for five minutes before I go to sleep or while my water's warming up in my bath. I'm going to do five minutes of mobility there. I'll do some cab raises while I'm waiting on my bath water. You don't have to do it an hour here, 30 minutes there. It doesn't have to be so um, structured. Militant. It doesn't yeah. have to be. It doesn't have to be so militant. Like, so it's more militant. Don't be so militant. Fit it in softer. Does that make sense? And where fit the stuff in softer. Efficient. Like the reason that instead of doing like a powerlifting warm up when I'm going to the gym to do a powerlifting workout. Instead of, you know, spending 10 minutes doing a powerlifting warm up, I was like, well, I can do a mobility flow. And then I was like, let's see if I can do a mobility flow and then go right into powerlifting. If that will. That's fun. Take the place of a warm up. Yeah. Or, you know, I mix it in with my other exercises at the gym because I'm already there doing a workout. Yeah. So I was like, well, instead of resting, I'll take my rest and do a mobility exercise instead of resting. So my example is just, okay, let me see where I can mix this in. Yeah. So yours might be while you're brushing your teeth. Yeah. It's like multitasking. Like we all multitask so much. Yeah. So it's just like, okay, how can I effectively fit this into my multitasking day? Yeah. And where can I put this that makes it easy and it's not extra time? Yeah. So you're right, Karen, because I was at that place where I was like, do I do one whole mobility day? Oh, and yeah. then do I have to do it on top? Like, do I have to stretch every day for 30 minutes on oh, top yeah. of a whole workout? Like, yeah. what do I do? So let's call that. That is, uh, I used to have that mentality. I don't anymore. Well, but that's let's, also, let's define that. But that's There's something there. It's almost like school teaches well, you. School's like, you can only pee at this time. You got to go to lunch at this time. You got to be at class at I this mean, time. You got seven periods. You get me, out. The bus picks you up. There's something with all that shit. There's that. It makes your brain think. You have no openness. But for me, it was also a lot of ignorance and that I didn't know what I needed for my body. And I didn't know that I could mix it all together. Uh -huh. So for me, but that's allowing you're allowed. Yeah. But it was that's also the part that ignorance. I'm saying. like the more that I, I didn't learned, say there wasn't ignorance. Yeah, yeah. I'm saying it was ignorance. Oh, no, like yeah. the more that I you're learned both. about mobility, the more I was able like, oh, I to can just add that to this. Yeah. Yeah. But there, right. There's another part that's not the ignorance. It's just being so emotional about having to do it in some kind of militant structured have to, have to, have to, because instead I, of want well, to. But part of that's also the reason I'm saying ignorance, like part of that is also the Dunning Kruger effect where mm -hmm. like, you don't know what you don't know. Like how much, right. like 
I'm learning mobility training. Like how much do I have to do it exactly like this girl on YouTube? And how much can I add it in with powerlifting? Like, you don't know. And I had to try it. And then I was like, oh, you can add those things together. Like nobody's mm -hmm. telling me that, yeah. but there's not me on YouTube doing it yet. So like, yeah. that's fine. Yeah. So it is like, it's rule following, but it's not, but it's, it's literally just trying it and being like, oh, Hey, like, those two things can go together, yeah. but you do have to give yourself the permission. So yeah. think about it in more of like a free form. Like I'm telling you the way I fit it in my schedule, but I'm saying that as an example of see what you can meld together and yeah. see what that works for you. Yeah. That's a good right. one. Yeah. It is. It's about mixing that. And I think we've always done that. Like instead of thinking, Oh, get on the bike for this long. Hey, just go up and down the steps as you're going up to work. You know, there's things like that, that you can do right. that, but. I think with when you're coming to the level of athletes that we are, yeah. you know that all those things make a difference, even those tiny little tweaks of exercise. Very so little you, stuff, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very so, little things make the biggest difference now. You really don't want to little things. Yeah. They make a big difference. You don't want to not do those things thinking, okay, I'm doing all my mobility things and then I'll and so that's that's what it is. And we're all task oriented. You know, we have our little task and that's what we need to get done. And that's where um, I probably live in that a lot. Is just okay. That, yeah. If you gave if, if you gave me every Monday what I was supposed to do with every single exercise, I would do it and be done. You know, and work it in throughout the day. But it's almost like as you're saying, we're sort of learning what is that that we and need. And all of us are different. So since all of us are different. What she says about mobility, she needs mobility. Mm -hmm. So each person has their thing. I mm -hmm. keep so much stress in my body. I have to have chiropractic, massage, gun, cupping, cryo, compression. So I'm different than her. I don't store pain in my body like she does. She actually flexes up more or whatever. She stores pain in her body longer. I store stress in my body. So I use all these modalities to just constantly release the stress out of my muscles, release right. it out of my mind. And I take that time to release it out of my mind and my, my muscles. And I feel so much better. Um, I also bore really easy. So I can't do the same shit over and over. I don't want a bunch of routines. If I get into too much routine, I start to go half to, and I'm like, fuck, I don't want to get up now. If right. I start to too much have to. I don't even want to get up. I don't even want. To, I don't want to do anything. If I keep it, I want to. I can't wait to. I'm excited to. Then I just I have fun. I have so much fun. I just go. I'm, this is great. Now I'm ready to go to bed. It was a fucking great day. So all we're trying to say is is whatever you think Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday you wake up and you go, mm, my ankles feels tight and stowed from that long walk. Well, I'm gonna just do stuff for my ankle today. I'm gonna soak my feet in the Epsom bath when I'm working. I'm going to put the ball underneath my foot, my foot and roll it. I'm going to use my massage gun on my Achilles and my calves. You could just say, I'm just focused on my ankle today. You got 30 days in a month. You can fit all your shit in in 30 days. Everything yeah. you want to do over 30 days. Does that it's, feel like a different way to look at and feel everything? Very much so, both of you. Yep. Thank you. It is. It's just, you know, you just want to make sure that you're doing everything so that you'll be prepared. Because that's what we're, we that's that what you will. Well, you know. We, know you, we know that you will. I know that you probably don't feel it, but I, it's just amazing. Your personality is thorough as hell. So you got to kind of let that sink in. You're very thorough, extremely thorough. Right. So well, and you're very conscientious and you're very conscientious. So maybe that kind of gets the best of you sometime. Like, are you right. aware how thorough and conscientious you actually are? You like go over. Well, thank you. I didn't mean this Zoom you're to welcome. be about Karen. <laughs> You are that Karen. Yeah, you are that Karen now. I mean, you have awards to prove it. We're, I'm outside of your brain telling you, here's what I see you do. So and you're very, very thorough. So have a little bit more fun. And instead of going by the hour or by the day, go by the 30 days. That's Say, okay, true. over 30 days, I'm going to fit all this in over a month's time. Now it gives you so much time on the clock. You're like, now I'm going to schedule it in, in fun ways. Well, hopefully this helped others and it wasn't. Like I didn't want to hog all that time, but I kept thinking. That's the great question. And everybody, everybody needed to hear it. So everybody uh, needed to hear it. Thank you both very, very much. Well, thank you. Thank you for the question. It was an excellent question. And we had to kind of make an example of you mm -hmm. just to explain the whole thing out. But yeah, all of us have to figure out like, you know, what does my body hold? Or is it all in my mind? Or is it in my emotions? Like your mental, Jody's more emotional. So, and I'm, I keep it all physical. 
And so with her, she's like, okay, pain wants to store in her. She's got to find her ways. I got to do my things with my muscle tightness and stress. Jody's got to be like, what do I do with my emotions? Yours is mental. What do you, and Michelle even said that. Michelle said, you, Rachel, and Rhonda are so mental. There's not enough coming through the emotion. And I said, well, can you help them with like massage and stuff? She said, I think so. She said, they have to be willing to actually go through the channel to let some of that mental come in and express itself physically. Out um, this not- make you feel better. You're not the first person ever told me I had mental issues. I'm just telling. Yours is emotion. Was that Jody talking? Jody, you're emotion. <laughs> I know. You know that. <laughs> I know I am. Okay, good. <laughs> <You're her. laughs> no. Jody's not the mental one. I talk to her mentally all the time. She's fine. She's like, Leave okay, me alone. <laughs> that dog in your house is exactly you. That that yeah. that, that, that your son bought. Well, no, no, the, but the dogs Another take after their owners, so that would be Dylan's problem. <laughs> that dog is exactly like you. So emotional. <laughs> Thank <laughs> so. you, lady. Thank you so much. That helps a lot. Okay. Well, you're welcome. You're welcome. 